What's happening everyone, Nick here from TV Box Stop and welcome back to another new and exciting review. Today's video features a projector like no other that's not only a projector but an Android TV box as well. Introducing the XGODY X1 native 1080p Android 9 TV box projector. This projector, though not the first of its kind, may be one of the first you can get at this price range. It has a stylish modern design with firmer features not seen in other models, designed to give you the complete package of a high quality projector as well as a high performance Android TV box. So to find out all that it has to offer, stay tuned, my full review is up next. The X1 has a native resolution of 1920x1080p. It can play 4K HDR videos and downscale them to 1080p. Its display is LCD and its light source is LED. It has a display brightness of 9500 lumens. It has a contrast ratio of 15000 to 1. It has a maximum viewing distance of 16.4 feet which produces a 300 inches display and an optimal viewing distance of 13.1 feet which produces a 120 inches display. It has 150,000 hours of LED lamp life. It has dual band 2.4 plus 5 GHz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0 technology. It has digital vertical and horizontal keystone correction and a 4D 4P corner keystone correction. It has 2GB of DDR3 RAM and 16GB of internal storage running on an Amlogic S905X3 CPU and Mali G31 GPU on Android 9 Pie operating system. So I'm back and in this package contains the X1 model itself. One Bluetooth voice slash infrared combination remote control. You get one HDMI cable, one AC power cable, a kickstand screw, a stylish carrying case, and a user manual. So taking a look at its design, its entire body is made of plastic with an IR sensor to the right corner here and you have its projector lens to the front. For connecting ports to its right, it has two HDMI inputs, two USB 2.0 ports, one auxiliary port, a headphone jack, and its exhaust vent. To its left, you have its focus adjustment wheel, its AC power socket, and a secondary intake vent. To its rear, it has a rear facing IR sensor to the edge here, a vent for its internal speaker, a breather vent for the speaker, and a third vent for its cooling fan. If you remove the plastic cover, you can gain access. At the top, it features a multicolored LED light show that can be adjusted from within the interface and it has a power button to the center. And below the projector has four anti-scale rubber pads, a screw hole for the included kickstand that can also be used for mounting to a tripod and it has screw holes for mounting to a ceiling mount. The included Bluetooth infrared combination remote out of the box works via infrared only and to connect to the projector via Bluetooth, simply press and hold the left and right buttons on the D-pad until the LED starts flashing rapidly. Then while flashing, continue to use the infrared with the D-pad to navigate to the Bluetooth settings where you compare to it. When you start up this projector for the first time, unlike standard projectors, this one starts with a splash screen followed by an Android boot up animation followed by an Android TV box launcher. Its firmware is divided into subsystems where you have the Android operating system running independently and you have the projector's media inputs running on another subsystem with different features separate from the Android operating system as I will show you in a moment. But for now, let's take a look at its Android operating system and how you can use it as a standard TV box. So on its launcher, you have options for mirroring your mobile devices using Mirrorcast or the cool Air Mirror app. You have a shortcut to change the source input. You have your Android file browser, the settings area, a shortcut to access its digital keystone correction, its corner keystone correction, and its zoom. And below you have shortcuts for Netflix, YouTube, the Google Play Store, and your apps section. The included voice remote works via Bluetooth and you can perform voice search commands, however, it does not have an AMOS feature. 
One Bitcoin is approximately $19,908.20. You can, however, connect any Bluetooth Air mouse via Bluetooth or using one of its USB ports and it will work with mouse cursor movements. So in this operating system, they decided to use the hybrid firmware seen in most recent TV boxes where its core operating system is Android TV OS with the Android TV Play Store and it has an interface from the mobile version. Its operating system is Android 9 Pie and you can access developer options by clicking on the firmware build information. So this firmware is not rooted as shown here by the root checker app. Also, it does not have the digital rights under the Android section to play premium movie apps such as Netflix in HD. Under Ada64, it shows that it's running on 2GB of RAM and 16GB of internal storage. Its Amlogic CPU is clocked at 1.7GHz with support for only 32-bit apps and games. Its GPU is the Mali G31 with OpenGL ES version 3.2 support. It has dual band 5 GHz Wi Fi support. It shows that it does not have Vulkan support. Its operating temperature is around 67 degrees Celsius. And it comes with decoders for the playback of 4K HDR videos and videos with surround sound audio formats such as Dolby Atmos and DTS Audio. It does not have AV1 and Dolby Vision decoders. It comes with wireless updates, and when I checked for updates, there was one available which dealt with an issue where it was having difficulty connecting to my audio receiver via Bluetooth. For official movie streaming services such as Netflix, Disney Plus, and Amazon Prime Video, you can install these apps manually, and some are pre installed after the firmware update. However, due to its lack of DRM support, these apps are limited to basic 480p resolution under this Android firmware. This doesn't hold the same when applied to its HDMI port as I will show you in a moment. The YouTube app, which is the Android TV version, plays up to 4K 1440p resolution with HDR. A much welcomed feature in this model that we cannot enjoy in other 1080p models is its ability to play 4K HDR videos and have it downscale to 1080p via a flash drive or portable storage connected directly to its USB port. The whole point of having Android running on this projector is to eliminate the need for an Android TV box to play 4K videos and other streaming apps. In this demonstration, I played my usual list of 4K HDR videos via a portable M.2 NVMe SSD enclosure connected to one of its HDMI ports and the videos played smoothly with HDR downscaled to 1080p and its display is fantastic. the mosaic of the Camp Nou and the Barcelona hymn being sung as referee Matteo Loff prizing presence on the bench as well Atletico playing in yellow Barca in uh, their traditional red and blue Barca
for playing Android games, you don't get much to go on with its limited RAM and internal storage. You can play some lower end Android games, but its graphics rendering is affected by its 2GB of RAM and internal storage of only 16GB. For playing videos with surround sound audio formats such as Dolby Atmos, DTS X, DTS HD Master Audio, Dolby Surround, and Dolby True HD, every projector I've tested to date either played some or none of those videos and produced audio. Well, with Android running on the X1, it comes with all of the decoders for the playback of videos with these formats. So I'll do a quick run through of these videos just to show that it can play audio from videos with such formatting. This is Dolby Atmos, the world's first object-based cinematic audio. With powerful moving audio... Staying on the topic of audio, after the firmware updated, I proceeded to pair my 7.1 audio receiver to achieve a cinematic audio experience. It managed to pair itself to my receiver successfully and played audio, but unfortunately, they still have some tweaking to do on the stability of the Bluetooth connection to audio devices as it frequently drops off. But with that said, when connected to controller devices such as gamepad controllers and Bluetooth remotes, the connection is stable. The problem only happens when connected to Bluetooth audio speakers and receivers. The good news is they are providing updates. For screen mirroring of mobile devices, this firmware comes with the official version of Miracast and another cool air mirror app for iOS devices. When I attempted to mirror my Android cell phone using the Miracast app that shows in HD, the app wouldn't connect to my mobile phone, so I installed the air screen app from the Play Store instead. Here I'm mirroring my mobile phone successfully, but it's not in HD. Returning now to the earlier part of my video where I was indicating that you cannot watch premium movie services such as Netflix in HD due to the lack of digital rights under the Android operating system. You can also recall I spoke about subsystems within the projector unrelated to Android. There is a way you can watch premium movie services in HD and that is by connecting an official streaming device to one of its HDMI ports. When you change the source input to HDMI, it starts up a subsystem within the projector that has its own settings area and it also has its own digital rights to play Netflix, Disney+, Amazon Prime Video and other premium apps in HD. You don't get 4K. You also have some advanced digital audio and video options in the settings area. Here I've connected the Amazon Fire TV Cube and to ensure that you get audio, you need to enter the settings area under the settings option Scroll down to the HDMI 2.0 option and set it to Auto. Once you do this, you can play your premium apps in HD with audio.
And finally, for its fan noise, from less than 1 meter away, it generates only 43 decibels of noise, which is one of the lowest fan noise levels I've ever recorded. So in summary, this projector is the total package. It's got style. It has bright display lumens. It has Android built-in that also makes it a TV box. It can play 4K HDR videos and videos with surround sound audio formats. It can play your Google Chromecast, Amazon Fire TV Stick and other official streaming devices in HD with audio. The only issue I have with this model is that even though they have updated their firmware and achieved connectivity to Bluetooth audio speakers and receivers, they are still updating to maintain a Bluetooth stability. However, Bluetooth is stable with Bluetooth controllers and gamepads. So viewers, once again, there you have it. This was my review of my first Android TV box projector, the XGODY X1. I really like this model and I highly recommend it as a great all-in-one projector solution to buy. A projector like this would usually cost over $300 on Amazon, but for a very low price of only $159 from the XGODY Amazon store with an Amazon Prime Day discount, you can grab one of these for a bargain. So to take advantage before the Amazon Prime Day deal ends, see the link in the description below this video. And as usual, links in the description are my affiliate links and when you use them to purchase or just to simply view the product, you support this channel directly and provides the means for me to acquire new products for review. So go ahead, have a look and thanks in advance for using my links. Give this projector the thumbs up because I believe it deserves it. If this is the first time viewing one of my videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notifications bell before leaving. This ensures that you receive notifications as to when I release new videos or decide to do a giveaway. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.